So today I wanted to follow up the GoPro 10 review with a review of the GoPro Max. So this is GoPro's 360 camera. For those of you who don't know, a 360 camera is a camera that records basically in all directions at once. So a typical GoPro, you know, it's got one lens, it records in one direction. This camera has two lenses, so it's basically recording in all directions at once. Why might you want to do that? One reason could be to view this in a VR headset, virtual reality. Not many people view content this way, so that's, that's you know, an option, but not something I think a lot of people are doing. The more frequent option is that you can take this 360 footage, you can put it on your computer or you can put it on your phone, and then within that 360 degrees, you can choose the shot that you want and you can export it to a typical video and then you could use it in YouTube or share it with friends or whatever it is. So let's uh, just get my quick take on the GoPro Max. Basically, I think this camera is a neat to have or a nice to have, but not necessarily a need to have. Um, I think anyone who's looking at GoPros should probably get a GoPro 9 or 10 if they can especially if they get it with the GoPro Max Lens Mod, which is a, an aftermarket lens that you can put on a typical GoPro to be able to get horizon lock, which means you can then use the GoPro in your line mount. So I think that's a more flexible option for most people. This camera gets you more interesting shots, shots that you can't get with the GoPro, but it comes with the cost. You have to put in time in post-production, exporting, using their reframe software. And I think that's not gonna be for everybody. Great, so let's get into the details, uh, starting with the things that I like about the camera. The thing I like most about the GoPro Max is that when you mount it on a selfie stick like this, you can actually hold it in your hand, get a shot of yourself, and the software in post-production will actually remove the selfie stick from the footage. So they call it kind of invisible selfie stick. In this shot opens up a lot of options to get different views of you kite surfing that would just be harder to do or maybe impossible to do with a regular GoPro. And I think that's probably the biggest strength of this particular camera. The next thing I like, all of the different views of this camera are wider. So they're wider angles and wider angles are generally more immersive. So if I'm using the camera like this right in front of me, you're gonna see a lot more of my hands, you're gonna see a lot more of my legs, you're gonna see your board. And that immersive experience makes the, the viewer feel like they're right there with you kiteboarding. And so I think that footage is, is interesting. And the next thing I like about the camera is that you can actually use this as a regular GoPro. So you can tell it, hey, just turn on one lens. I wanna use this as a regular GoPro. You could put a bite mount on it. You could go riding and use it just like you would a regular GoPro. I don't think it's better than a regular GoPro, but it's a nice backup option. For those of you who are really interested in the 360 footage, it also gives you some option to get some of the regular GoPro footage. Next thing I really like about the camera is that if you're using this in 360 mode, it basically allows you to do horizon lock. And so that means no matter whether the camera is right side up or upside down, it can rotate the horizon so that your footage is always right side up exactly the way you'd wanna use it. This is particularly useful when you're using a line mount when you're kite surfing. You would mount this in your line mount and then as you turn your kite the camera would kind of constantly be rotating which would mess up your footage. Uh, the GoPro 360 allows you to get really smooth line mount footage. Last, the thing I like about this camera is the reframing. In previous versions of this camera and in previous versions of other 360 cameras, the reframing process was super difficult. Now you can take the 360 footage, you can put it on your computer, you can put it on your iPhone, and you can kind of point the camera, click start, move the camera, click stop, export it, and it's reasonably user-friendly. It's pretty quick if you're only gonna do it for a couple of shots. If you shoot a lot of footage with it, it starts to get more complicated, which we'll talk about in a second. Great, so let's get into the things that I don't like. Starting with the first thing, the reframing process. If you shoot a lot of footage with this particular camera, you're gonna have to rewatch every bit of that footage. You're gonna have to look in kind of 360 degrees within that footage to understand, you know, where's the action happening and you're gonna have to reframe the lens. And if you have a lot of shots, that ends up eating up a lot of time. So the reframing has gotten a lot easier than it was in the past. It's still time consuming uh, and certainly not as quick as just exporting from a regular GoPro and sharing it on the web. And the next thing I don't like about the camera is basically the lower resolution. So this is a bit tricky. The camera says it's, you know, 4K or 5K, 
But the thing is, is that resolution is spread throughout the 360 degrees. So that means you have less resolution in any given area to be able to zoom in. The camera is really good for immersive experiences where you're kind of zoomed out. As soon as you try to get cropped in or as soon as you try to get closer to the action, you kind of run out of resolution fast. And that's where the GoPro 9 and 10 actually end up being a lot better. So hopefully the next generation will have higher resolution. Next challenge, so I showed this earlier, is really with these lenses. You can see the lenses are a bit more curved than a, than a typical GoPro lens, which is flat. And these curved lenses have two problems. First, water drops tend to stick to them a little bit more easily and water drops will ruin your footage. And then the next one, since they, the lenses stick out on either side, you really have to have these lens caps. You can't just throw the camera in your bag because you know there's a risk of you scratching the lenses and these aren't replaceable. Unlike the regular GoPro, you can't just unscrew the lens, put a new one on. You have to buy a whole new camera. Let's get into a couple ways that someone could use the GoPro Max. First, it's that selfie view that I was talking about earlier. You put this on a selfie stick, you can hold it in your hand. I'll put some footage up here. Basically, it's gonna remove this selfie stick from the footage, and it basically gives you a third-person angle without having to have someone else there filming you. Some people will just do the handheld shot. I've seen some people you know, put it in a backpack or an impact vest so that you can go kind of hands-free. Uh, I've seen other people put it on the helmet, um, which is a little bit weirder looking, but you know, if it gets the footage you want, it may be worth a shot. So that's really that selfie angle. The next type of shots I think people will want to get with this camera is point of view. So you get a mouth mount like this. This is the GoPro mount, mouth mount. You can clip it to the camera. You can bite on it. And basically wherever you look, the camera will look. You can do that at the regular GoPro mode, so you can just use one camera, or you can use both cameras and get a much wider perspective, which is which is unique and something you can only do with this, this particular camera. So that's point of view. And then last is the line mount mode. I mentioned this a few times earlier. I have an entire video on this. You have to get a line mount that works specifically with the GoPro Max. You'll mount this in your lines, you'll take off. Uh, you probably want the GoPro remote with that so that you can start and stop recording. You go, you know, you go out for a session, you're riding, camera's filming from your kite, you can reframe after the fact, and you can get some pretty unique shots. The main issue I have with that one yet again is, is you can't zoom in as much as you want. Uh, but there you have it, that's the line mount shot. Yep, so those are my thoughts on the GoPro Max. Basically, I think it's a nice or neat to have. Most people are gonna wanna go for a GoPro 9 or GoPro 10 and use that with the max lens mod so it opens up the options on the kite line mount. If budget is a concern and you can't get either of those, I still think you're probably better served with maybe a GoPro 7. Get one of the GoPros that have removable lenses and good stabilization, and you're gonna be able to have a lot of fun with that. For people who already have those and are really looking for something a little bit extra, something unique, the GoPro Max does that. It does take some thinking and some planning ahead to make sure you can get your shots. It has a learning curve. You have to learn how to use the software. And so I think not everyone's gonna wanna do that, for, but for the people who have maybe a YouTube channel or for someone who's a kite surfing coach who really wants to get people footage of themselves in their sessions to be able to give feedback, this is definitely something that helps you get those extra angles. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. Hopefully this was useful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or feedback, put them in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.